How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This was directed by Jeff Rowe and stars the voice talents of Maya Rudolph, Jackie Chan, and permanent teenager Seth Rogen. One day, a TCRI scientist by the name of Baxter Stockman goes rogue, and he steals company secrets and technology to create his own little family of mutants. Unfortunately, a TCRI strike force ruins the whole thing, but his little mutant family escapes. And during that whole mess, a container of the mutant ooze that Baxter Stockman used to create his mutant family falls into the sewers, and if you know anything about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know what happens next. Fifteen years later, the Rat Splinter and his four turtle sons are living in the sewers, staying far away from the human world because they aren't even tolerant of their own kind, much less a bunch of mutant animals. But the turtles inadvertently attract the attention of the human April O'Neil, which ultimately leads them to Baxter's now grown-up mutant family and a plot to take over the world. I've seen pretty much every incarnation of the Ninja Turtles on the big and small screens because I am old. Some of those incarnations worked a little bit better than others, but I do appreciate that each one is a little bit different. Each version borrows something from the source material but puts their own little spin on it, which helps keeps it fresh, and Mutant Mayhem is no exception. Tonally, it's probably closer to the original 1987 cartoon and borrows a few elements from there, although there are Easter eggs from other versions of TMNT as well. April is not a journalist in this version, but is a teenager who aspires to be one someday. Baxter does not turn into a fly in this version. Instead, the fly is his adopted mutant son, who is known as Superfly. And that reminded me that Baxter the Fly has shown up in a few different versions of TMNT, and I don't think they've ever actually given him a mutant codename. Even after he turns into the fly, he's still Baxter Stockman. And I suppose they still haven't given him a code name because this is a separate character. The movie is definitely kid-friendly, but at the same time, it's not dumbed down, which I do appreciate. It's got a very well-written story, and the jokes are appropriate for kids, but can still be appreciated by all ages. Like I said before, I am old, and I still laugh my ass off during this movie. The Turtles voice actors all work very well together, and they genuinely feel like, A, teenagers, and B, brothers. That familial bond feels very real, and it probably helps that they had them record their lines at the same time instead of doing them individually. I thought Jackie Chan was very good as Splinter. He really nails the overprotective father role. I never thought I would see the day when Ice Cube was playing a role in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, but here we are. I thought he was pretty good as Superfly for the most part, but the character tends to throw out these random hip-hop lines, and they do indeed feel very random. There was one moment in particular where he throws out a line from Ice-T 6 in the morning, and I recognize the reference, but I don't understand why it was in that particular scene. It just seemed like it was in there just for the sake of it. And he's not the only villain. We also have Maya Rudolph playing a human villain? Question mark? I say that because the character's name is Cynthia Utram, and I don't know if that was just meant to be a reference or possibly a hint at something more to come. And I thought Ayo Itabiri did a really good job as April. Very intelligent and ambitious, but at the same time a little bit unsure of herself, which I'm sure a lot of kids can relate to. And it makes sense that she would bond with the Turtles, as they're all kind of social outcasts that long to be accepted. And that's a big part of the story, wanting to be accepted in a world that seems to be overrun with prejudice and xenophobia. And there's also a bit in there about not just doing the right thing, but doing it for the right reasons. Do you genuinely want to help people, or do you just want the hero worship? Animation definitely took some inspiration from Spider-Verse. It has a very comic booky feel to it. And that feels appropriate considering Ninja Turtles started out as a comic. And that art style lends itself very well to all of these bizarre mutant characters. I thought Jeff Rowe, who co-wrote and co-directed The Mitchells vs. The Machines, was an excellent choice for this movie and did a very good job putting it all together. The action sequences are shot very well, if that's the right word for it, and a lot of fun. And in some places, they almost feel video game-like. There's one sequence in particular where Splinter just has to fight off wave after wave of these nameless enemy goons. You finish off wave one, oh, the door opens, here comes wave two, and then here's another wave, and here comes the boss. And even though very much of the movie takes place at night, you can still see everything. Thank you! Even in the middle of the night, you can still see the color and the detail, and I'm glad somebody understands how this is done. I did have an issue with the sound mixing in my theater in a handful of places. I don't know if that had anything to do with the version of the movie that they got, or if it was just they didn't set the volume levels right. It's a little troubling that this sort of thing keeps happening. I swear this wasn't a common thing years ago. 
But hopefully that was just a problem with the sneak preview that I attended, and they'll get that straightened out when the movie officially drops on August 2nd. Overall, I was pretty happy with this. This was one of the better adaptations of TMNT that I've seen. Great cast, well-written story, excellent animation, I dug it. And I definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you're a fan of this franchise. And take the kids, they'll like it too. And stick around for the mid-credits scene, as that gives a hint at the sequel, which has apparently already been greenlit. And that's all I have to say about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Till next time, take care.